Welcome to Minding Men. I'm your host, Brian Pollack, and we are here today on Mainline TV with Dr. Charlyn Small. She is the Assistant Director for Health Promotion at the University of Richmond's Counseling and Psychological Services, better known as CAPS. It's in Virginia, and she is awesome. She received her PhD from Howard University School of Education, and Dr. Small has co-founded multiple foundations, including acting as a co-founder of the Institute for Anti-Racism and Equity. Dr. Small, I'm so happy you're here. We need you at this time, and I cannot wait for us to start this conversation. It is my real pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, absolutely. You know, you and I have spoken, and I have to say today, myself, for me as a white guy, I'm going to be learning a ton. Um, I don't have as many black friends as I wish or as I used to have in my old uh, lifestyle before I became a professional uh, therapist and, um, and group practice owner. So I'm really, really lucky to have colleagues like you, whom I love and I adore, and I just have such wonderful conversations with. So, so really, I, I as we talk about guys and men and mental health, can you fill me in a little, fill us all in? You know, are we in a little bit of a, a crisis between mental health and black males? Truthfully, you know, it, it really depends on how you define mental health crisis. And I have to say, preparing for this, you know, I did a little informal, impromptu uh, survey of several Black men, and I'm amazed that they all were well, they were real excited to uh, help me with this. They all had a point of view. And most of them said, duh, yes, yes, we are in a crisis. I mean, when you think about the statistics, and, and I, I'm not going to try to be so uh, on point because several people say different things, but um 16% of Black Americans have been reported to have some kind of illness, and 22% uh, of those, which is about roughly a million people, have reported serious illnesses within the past year. And then you talk about things like uh, suicide, um, it, it, it's the third leading cause of death for persons between 15 and 24 years old. And, and we're catching up with um, everybody on everything. So it, it binge eating, uh, smoking, drinking. Um, yes, it's a problem. Yeah, and let me ask, you know, typically guys, stereotypically, uh, don't talk. They don't talk about problems. They don't say things. They don't bring these things up. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think? Do you think those numbers are correct? Do you think it's possibly just that it's underreported? Could it be that people aren't admitting to having more struggles or do you think it's low or high? What, what's your take on that, particularly around males? Well, a, a little bit of both. You know, I wanted to say well, you know, black males, um, you know, they, they don't tell anything, but is, isn't it just males in general? I mean, the, any male culture is, you know, I'm, I'm a manly man guy and, uh, you know, y'all don't even want to ask for directions. So, <laughs> so when it comes to uh, asking for help, for something like this, uh, no, you, you, you're, dude, you're weak-minded, uh, uh, you know, man up, suck mm -hmm. it up, shake it off, get over it, put some dirt on it, and get on with it, mm -hmm. um, so be vulnerable, I don't think so, um, you know, that's just, that's just the way it is. 
Yeah, and, and as we continue doing this show, one of my goals is to do as much of a fair and just service and equitable service to diversity along the way. And, you know, when we look at mental health and when we look at men and part of me wants to say, let's just, okay, just talk about men in general, but that's not fair to the black experience. And I don't think it's fair to, to um, assimilate everyone into the same place. Well, and, it's it's not. I agree with you, and I'm sorry I cut you off. Go ahead. It's okay. Uh, you're more important than me. And and so when we look at particularly black men, and we're talking about, you know, let's say there is somewhat of a mental health crisis, or even just a a, a dichotomy of experience right now, or a dissonance, something unpleasant. Um, is there certain signs that you see within the community uh, that black men? might be exhibiting or the way they express themselves that you're seeing that could be somewhat distinct to their experiences here in our current crazy climate that we live in? Um, I want to say yes, but a a ask me that a little different. Say, yeah. say it to me again. So, so, so let's talk about all the protests. Let's talk okay. about Black Lives Matter. Let's talk about how uh, there's all kinds of people stepping up to the plate here. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, black men, I can imagine the emotional and psychological toll this is taking on them. It's awful because it's just more of the same. I mean, you can go, well, really, you can start at any point in history, but uh, less in the interest of time, we can go back to Kenneth and, and Mamie Clark, you know, in the 50s, their doll uh, experiments. That is how early these messages of there's something wrong with me begin. Okay, that's how early it begins. Um, you know, and, and, and that study has been replicated so many times and, and you to here's the little white baby. Uh, which one is good? Oh, the little white baby. Now, which one is bad? You know, the black one. Okay, so you're growing up and, and this is what you're getting all the time. Okay, so then you, uh, you, you're, you're getting so many other kinds of messages. Uh, the, let's not forget about racism. It's alive and well. Uh, acculturative stress, you know, those uh, uh, microaggressions and, and so forth. And, and, and um, acculturative stress can be uh, subtle and blatant, you know. Sometimes it's so subtle that you don't even know that something has happened, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's that little jab that you get uh, for women. Oh, honey, you are beautiful for a, a dark-skinned girl. I, I think I'm beautiful, period. Okay, black men are still, you can be in a three-piece suit looking spiffy and spectacular and you get on the elevator and we're still getting clutching of purses. Uh, uh, you walking down the street and, and, and uh, people cross over, you know, and, and then, yes, there is police uh, uh, misconduct. I mean, Walter Wallace, what, what is really happening here? Um, I, okay, yes, he uh, was reported to have had a weapon, but I'm always thinking, can't you shoot him in the kneecap? Um, it, but I, I mean, I know there's two sides to that. And listen, I was raised by a career policeman. Okay, so this isn't coming from any place of kill the pigs, they're horrible people. Mm -mm, no, I, I understand that when you pull your service revolver out, you, you, you got to be prepared to shoot the kill. But we need people to uh, be more trained in how to handle 
mental health emergencies, okay? We've, we've got the whole intergenerational trauma thing. Th these are our daily lived experiences. Um, when my father taught my oldest brother to drive uh, over 50 years ago, uh, his instructions were uh, hands in plain sight, don't make any sudden moves if you get stopped by the policeman. And that's not just for um, uh, traffic stops, that's for any uh, encounter with policemen. Okay, then uh, tw 10 or 12 years later, when he told, taught my other brother and I how to drive, we got the same set of instructions. My babies are 17 and 19. They're new drivers. You think I didn't have to give them the exact same message? And I promise you that if my children have children, they're going to have to give them the same instructions. Intergenerational trauma, okay? Stuff that's handed down. Uh, Mass incarcerations. We 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 uh, prisons have have become uh, repositories for people with mental illness. I I don't know if you've seen uh, Ava DuVernay's Thirteen. That thing is a masterpiece. You need to see it. She talks about the the, the plea bargaining and and people being cajoled into uh, now look. You know, you can go in there and say you're innocent if you want to, but if they don't believe you, then it's up the river you go. So, okay, I guess I better cop to something. And there you are, locked in some system and doing slave labor. You know, people like, well, not, I guess I better not call anybody's name, but lots of companies use persons in the prison system to do their work. Um, lots of big companies, household words, in fact, stereotypes, okay? Let's not forget about stereotypes. Um, I, there's a, a slide that I use in some of my presentations. There's this guy and he's standing there and he's holding a baby and he has a sign on him that says, uh, father, uh, positive thinker, some some other couple of good things. And then also it says victim of racial stereotype. Okay, because that's those wonderful things are probably not what you automatically think of when you see him. So it's just, you know, there's physical concerns. There's trauma, there's all kind of trauma, okay? Let's not forget uh, males are raped and molested uh, in untold numbers. Now, you asked the question before about whether or not um, uh, these things are just gone unreported. Well, sexual assault of males is certainly one of the things that goes un, un um undiscovered you know we we because you, you have to hide that because you don't want anybody to know that this thing is happening to you so all of these things uh are are important uh with you you're passed over for promotions uh you you don't get that tenure even though you worked very hard for it you don't get the raise uh in, in our families we're taught that you got to be real good. You got to be better than any of the other persons um, in order to get the same kind of things. But then you don't always get, you know, the same thing, even though you were as wonderful. So you, you how long can you, you know, experience this and be okay yes and actually what it makes me you, man we can talk for hours and all of this that you just mentioned really makes me think well the only reason and 
that any black man might actually have a quote unquote mental health crisis is because I really think the socioeconomic, political, and stigmatizing, almost racist, yes, racist mm -hmm. structures actually are the mental health crisis, right? So then we're sitting here and we're projecting it as a society and culture onto the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying black men are the most vulnerable in a negative way mm -hmm. in that they are, have no choice but to soak up this stuff because it's mm -hmm. being thrown at them mm -hmm. all the time, everywhere mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that trauma informed lens to go back to the Wallace situation. I mean, come on, this guy has gone through how much and then we're just not even going to come from any type of trauma informed or even mental health lens to help this guy when the police, I believe, were even notified that that was the case. They said that they had been there three times that day. And I don't know, you know, we we weren't there. We don't know. But yeah, come on. I mean, let's not forget about some of the others, uh, Breonna Taylor. Is folk sit, what, what is, uh, I can't call his name, the guy sitting in his house where he's supposed to be in his home, minding his very own business, sitting on the couch eating some ice cream. And the woman runs in the door and thinking it's her apartment. She didn't recognize this was not my apartment, and she shoots the guy. Uh, what? And and there's the the woman that was uh, babysitting the nephew or whatever it was. And I, I, how do these things happen? And these are our family members. These are our loved ones, our cousins and sisters, and and so you're watching this thing happen, how are you okay? How do you manage to be all right? We, you know, I said at the onset, we could start at any place in time. And, and I chose to start with Kenneth Clark in the fifties, but we want to go back to racism. Why don't we back in the old days of slavery? Okay. Can you imagine uh, having your woman raped in front of you uh, repeatedly and you can't do anything about it. Your babies are snatched out of your arms and sold, okay? And then the next week it might be you. So how, and and, and people, people want to say, oh, well, now that was in the past. So just get on with it, dude. But no. It's not in the past. Uh, Dr. Ross that we talked about earlier, and I, I would never try to speak as eloquently as she does, but um, uh, she talks about how the, the, the brain is hardwired uh, so that, you know, the, these changes take place and they're passed down from generation to generation. It's just... Well, it's a lot. It is. And what fascinates me from a lot of things you're talking about from a more um, positive lens, because there is so much of this, um, is the fact that somehow, I don't know how, there still is a way the Black community has found strength and connection and community when so much of what has been put on them has, if it was me, I would be broken. There is no way I could handle that. I know exactly what you mean. A lady named Joy DeGray, uh, I think that's how you say her name. She's so brilliant. She talks about that very thing. She talks about how during slavery, these awful things happened to us. There was no therapy, individual or group, you know? But somehow we are resilient and and we just managed to, to be okay. I, I think it was those uh, 
uh, you had your community organizations, you know, you, we have our sororities and, and fraternities and, and other kinds of organizations and church and, and so forth. Um, we just have to try to be all right. We, we have our authentic allies like yourself who uh, provide the platform so that we can come and, and, and discuss these very important issues. I mean, the impact of this whole mental health crisis or problem, whatever, for Black men is uh, they're absent from our families, you know? Um, they're... they're they're in jail, they're standing on the intersections with the big 7-Eleven, big cup, asking for quarters. Um, it, it's hard. And, and, and sometimes we, they, they've left the family, um, not because these are horrifying people, but how hard is it if you you can't take care of your family. And you know that all men, well, I can't say all, every each, but come on, men have that pride thing, okay? You you, you, you have that pride. And uh, it, it, uh, back in the welfare times, you know, uh, God forbid a woman had a man that was coming around and spending time and heaven forbid he bought uh, something over there. Well, then, oh, you got help. Well, we're going to have to take away your uh, uh, welfare uh, uh, checks and whatever have you because, you know, and, and what? You, you got a part-time job? Well, I am sorry. See, so all of these things, these have been our lived experiences and it's pretty hard uh exasperating mm -hmm. and to culturally understand this world the fact that you said for example and this is me being um a white guy mm -hmm. the fact that you said that you have to put your hands on the steering wheel mm -hmm. or on the dashboard mm -hmm. I pseudo kind of knew that, right? Mm -hmm. But it really didn't come to attention until Black Lives Matter, thank mm -hmm. goodness, started putting it out there. And and if I didn't know that, and I'm not saying I know everything at right. all. because Who I does? Who the heck does that lives in their own secluded suburban, uh, we'll stop there, uh, life. And, you know, there is this part of it where, uh, how much are we missing? And you know the fact that you provided a few of these names. I mean, me alone. I'm 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 going to check them out. We need to check them out, and I'm going to write those names on the list at some point. I mean, everything you're saying, and we only have a few minutes left. I really, really want to know is how do men find a way to culturally band together or understand this dissertation of information that you literally just talked about. Well, you know, there are some uh, uh, notable things. For instance, NIH is doing a, a uh, I don't know, they have a grant or whatever it is. Uh, it's called Brother, You're On My Mind. It's a fraternity, um, my brother fraternity to my sorority. In fact, uh, I, well, can, I don't know, can you say whatever? Well, it's in the, you can Google it. it it's Omega Sci-Fi. And, and they uh, list several things that they think you should uh, do to try to, uh, to, to address these things. They, they, they talk about, uh, uh, they, they list several of the different kinds of uh, organizations and so forth. And these things you can find online. They talk about joining in their groups. They talk about 
how to educate uh, in, in, in your church groups and, and, and so forth. Um, these things have to take place. I, you got to remove the barriers, okay? Uh, you you got to get rid of that whole, look, man, suck it up kind of thing. In this little informal thing that I did, men said, mental health has to be a part of your daily routine, your 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 health routine. You've got to do it. Audre Lorde talked about uh, a, a radical self-care. She was talking to women, but I, I can't help but think she was talking to us all. She said that, that uh, self-care is not self-indulgent. It's self-preservation. She called it an act of warfare. And these men in my little informal uh, survey said, yep, you gotta, when you go to the gym to work out and you go to the doctor, you gotta, you gotta do these things. Uh, the, the mistrust of the health system, you know, we, we can go back to Tuskegee and, and, and go up the Flint and, and uh, contemporarily you can talk about Serena and the kinds of things that she did. You can even buy good health care. We've got to get rid of those barriers and you got to have me back so that we can talk about some of this some more. Between you, my buddy Kevin, who worked his way up to be in the Met, which they're bringing back Porgy and Bess. He just texted me. He's so excited about it. And, and, and all the wonderful people I'm hoping to have on here. Please tell me, is there a website people can find more about what you do and some of this amazing stuff from your heart you're doing? Yes. My uh, uh, anti, my, the Institute for anti-racism and equity uh, in mental health care is the really long uh, uh, name. And anti-racism and equity.com. Yes. Got it. Okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah, that's <laughs> and I never can get it straight. But yes, that's how you can reach me and uh, my other co-founders. And we can talk to you until you're blue in the face. And, and we're there as a resource. You know, you can call us ask us questions. We will come out. We will call you. We will, uh, if, if there's something that you ask me and we don't know the answer, we'll find it. We'll get it for you. Amazing. I could not enjoy this conversation anymore. Dr. Charlene Small, you are incredible. You are smart. You are everything. I am so happy to have spoken with you. We will have you back. There's no doubt about it. The only thing I ask is that you look as beautiful and with all this wonderful light as you always do. So thank you very much. It is my real pleasure. I certainly appreciate your inviting me. Thank you so much for being an authentic ally. Uh, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching. This is Minding Men. Be safe. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time out there in the world. Stand up to what you need. We got this.